welcome to the last uh, talk of this series called Design is a Conversation. Thanks, David, for coming here and uh, making that for us. Today, uh, the talk is about innovation. So a round of applause for him. Yay! Oh, I can do it. I'm going to introduce a term that is kind of at the center of user-centered design. That makes it the center of the center, doesn't it? So, need finding. I'm going to talk about need finding sort of for the rest of the time. That's how I've co-opted the talk. So first of all, note that it's for discovering needs and creating solutions. Needs and solutions are different things. We discover needs, but we create solutions. What does the lady need to reach the shelf? Or does she need the ducting? Or does she need the air that flows through the ducting? Or does she need to be comfortable? Which is it? Design activity part two. Right now, I want you guys to design a way to reach something on a high shelf. And you guys have three minutes to do so, starting now. Again, make as many as you can. If there's time left, make more. The more you make, the more one idea will inspire the next. If your neighbor has a good idea, steal it. I didn't, I, in walking around the room, I didn't see too many ladders. I saw uh, friends on each other's shoulders. I saw uh, shoes with springs on them. A tool that helps you reach up higher. Things are not ladders. All of a sudden, you guys are thinking about a need, and you're making all kinds of crazy solutions, which is exactly the point. So these are explicit needs. They're right out there, lying on the floor to be picked up. There's implicit needs also. These are not so obvious. These actually require active, creative interpretation. You have to figure out what's going on and try to understand what the needs really are because they're not so obvious. But it takes a while to start seeing things that you're not expecting to see when you go in. When somebody makes a home remedy to try to fix something that isn't working, it is like a laser that is pointing you to a need that's going unfulfilled by the current design. So you're looking for those. And then this is the most important part. Ask yourself why these things are happening. Uh, don't ask them. They don't know. Ask yourselves why these things are happening. about another ingredient that like I think it's really uh, like necessary which is like maybe curiosity I mean I I think that for being a great designer being curious about people is really the most important thing what do you guys think about curiosity in your students uh, to um, promote that to encourage that the way uh, you force them to confront each other, mm -hmm. not to be alone. Mm -hmm. And so to develop uh, um, an interpretation of mm -hmm. what they observe. To some extent, uh, this is a ground on which you can develop curiosity. So I think that what we can do is to help people find the, the instruments and the tools and the ways in, in which they can feed their curiosity and their attention for other people. So, remember this sort of design cycle with all of this stuff? We're still talking about what you do to get started. So, that's what I have. Thank you.
say it's not good necessarily to ask people questions directly, uh, but you still want to find the answers to why they do the things they do. And I find a great way to do that is to get them to tell me stories. Uh, when people start talking about their lives and telling stories, they get very animated um, and things uh, that they might not otherwise have revealed about themselves start to come out. And those can be very useful insights. Thank you.